Hello there again, friends and neighbors. This is me, Stella Hendricks. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel once again. Do you like my Jimi Hendrix shirt? I actually need to show it off a little bit because I made it. I upcycled it. Isn't it rad? Oh yeah. It's so cool. I actually, I had faded it accidentally when I left it in the store window at my cousin's shop when I worked there and I was like oh no I ruined it and so what I did was I took some bleach and I squirted it down the back and I just faded the whole thing out kind of tie-dye style and now you can't even tell are you amazed I was amazed that's my own genius <laughs> ah. okay so Today we are here for chapter 10 of The Girl in the Centerfold by Surrey Marsh. All right, um, as always, I'm not reading the whole thing. I am only reading excerpts and uh, these are all my opinions that I'm gonna be offering. I really encourage you to buy this book and form your own opinions for yourself. <sighs> chapter 10, Dear Miss Marsh. Shortly after I moved in with Biff, Alexis Urba came to New York to complete the Playmate layout. He spent a couple of days photographing me. Playboy published eight of the dozens of black and white photographs Alexis Urba took in New York together with the full color backlighted photo he had taken in Chicago. Thus, I was shown bundled to my ears in a suede coat, wearing a simple white dress and in a baggy sweater and old shirt, as well as the bunny costume. All of this attire is important to the Playmate fantasy for it enables the viewer to mentally undress me. Coat, white dress, half dressed in the bunny costume, and finally, as, par as the parlance goes, bare ass sticking and in stepping into the shower. Considering the popularity of Playboy, I guess men spend a lot of time wondering what a girl looks like with her clothes off. Oh, they definitely do. As October passed into November and then into December, marking my first anniversary in America, I realized I was rather happy. I was thoroughly domesticated. I worked at the Playboy Club during the day, kept house during the rest of the time, and loved Biff all the time. By the common, common yardstick, I know that I was living in sin, but I didn't feel sinful. I felt married. On this, in the second week of December, I was flown to Chicago. Six executives interviewed me. Each had a red sheet on which he graded me on a scale from one to six on things such as my posture, both sitting and standing, dear me, <laughs> attractiveness, poise, voice, etc. The only opinion that mattered to me was Biff's. Hey baby, that's great. Wow, you got a great fanny. Didn't I tell you, you didn't I always tell you you had a great fanny? Did I miss something? I did miss something. Whoop, I skipped a page, yeah. <laughs> Each had a red sheet on which he graded me on a scale from one to six on things such as my posture, both sitting and standing, attractiveness, poise, voice, etc. There was food and drink and lots of it. The right music, a big crowd of people, all of them coiffed and manicure, manicured and sequined. Oh, there was laughter and decibels of chatter and gallons of spilled drinks. The high point of the evening was the appearance of Hefner. He came late. The party had been going for an hour or so. There had been a significant number of expressions of, where is Hef? When is he coming? Then a hush fell over the crowd. I had a feeling that somewhere Harold trumpets were about to sound. He looked very handsome. Mary Warren, hanging on his arm, was stunning in a floor-length red velvet dress. Hefner smiled, dislodged his pipe, and with his relaxed manner, navigated the two steps to mingle with his subjects. He stayed about an hour, then disappeared to write another installment of the Playboy philosophy, I guess. She is hysterical. <laughs> the snark of this girl is epic. I love her. God, I had never seen any of the photographs taken by Alexis Urba or those by Pompeo Posar for that matter. I knew all about posing, hours of posing, days of posing, but I had no idea what the result of it all would be. I had considerable curiosity and looked forward to the publication day. When I finally obtained a copy of the magazine and eagerly flipped it to the centerfold, I was pleased, I guess, 
That seemed to be a pretty girl there. She had a great fanny and a booby that stuck out and pouty lips and big, big eyes. The pink silk was beautiful. The biggest surprise to me was how big she was. The girl standing in the at the shower curtain seemed bigger than life size. I guess I never realized how big a three page fold out is. That looked like me, weak chin, fat cheeks and all. The only opinion that mattered to me was Biff's. Hey baby, that's great. Wow, you got a great fanny. Didn't I always tell you you had a great fanny? That's what Biff said. Dear sweet Biff said that. For the next two days, he ran around and showed it to his friends. This is my girl. Doesn't she have a great fanny? I always said she had the greatest fanny I ever saw. In addition to the $2,500 and the admiration of friends and loved ones, being a playmate also means you get mail. Lots of mail. And then she reads off a whole bunch of different letters that she had uh, received from her admirers. Uh, some of them hilarious, some of them adoring, some of them, like none of them were really mean. And honestly, if someone wrote you a letter who was mean, toss it out, get out of here, he has brought you. Okay, so my impressions. Uh, man, Suri is determined to sex shame herself and all the other girls. That attitude continues to really kind of, um, that attitude continues to really kind of pity her because I can't see, hmm, what did I write there? I, I wrote some kind of nonsense. Well, I guess it makes me pity her because there's truly really nothing that she's done wrong and you can almost see her starting to enjoy herself before she kind of like has to pull back really quick and say, oh no, no, I wasn't enjoying that. It's like if she was describing herself out at a night at a party, she'd be like, oh yeah, and we were dancing and the music came on and it was my favorite, it was my jam. So I started dancing, I mean, uh, like a whore. I was like such a whore, I was dancing such a, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed of myself, it was so bad. Like, girl, girl, relax, just take a breath. It's okay to enjoy things, it's okay. It's, inc it's okay, <laughs> chill out, dude. And the only opinion, she says in there, the only opinion that matters was Biff's. Well, the only opinion that actually matters is yours. Who agrees that this is beautiful? Who agrees that this is ugly? You know, I guess because she herself thought that it was ugly and thought that it was bad, therefore it was. But don't you see the power that you hold in your own hands there, Suri? You have the power to make this thing beautiful and good. It's not inherently good or bad. It really depends on your perspective and your desire. Like you have so much power here. <sighs> well, so much power in that chapter. The next chapter I have to prepare everyone for because uh, I get real upset with the way that uh, Playboy Promotions was handled. I get pretty upset about that. Um, I'm a pretty big uh, fan of Playboy, of the Playboy philosophy. Um, you know, when Hugh Hefner gives interviews, his answers, I like pretty darn well, pretty, pretty much across the board. I really agree with a lot of the mentalities that he presents uh, to the public. Of course, as many public figures are, he absolutely had to have had some things in his past. There's that show, The Secret of, Secrets of Playboy, and I've seen most of it, I think. And I don't believe all of it. Um, my default is to believe victims. Um, but when stories aren't adding up, stories aren't adding up. I myself am a victim of assault and I know what it's like to not be believed. It's a really awful thing. And I do think it's best for all of us to try to default um, to believing people when they talk about things they've been through. But that doesn't mean, I mean, do we all believe Amber Heard? I don't think most of us do. There's a lot of, you know, it's very, it's very complex. Uh, in this particular case, I absolutely believe uh, what Suri talks about her experience with the Playmate promotions are and on that show, Secrets of Playboy. I all that stuff about the promotions and stuff. Yep, I could totally see that happening, 100%. And that's so devastating that the girls were not better protective because they absolutely should have been because they made that magazine. They were that magazine, they are. I'm so glad for what Playboy is today. I think they're really on a great traje trajectory 
and I, yeah, I, just, I totally love it. So thanks for coming again to another episode of Girl in the Center Fold. We really are kind of scooting right through these. The chapters used to be longer, I think. These episodes used to be longer. I think YouTube is probably going to penalize me for putting up uh, really short videos, but what can we do? We can only do what we can do. We can't do what we can't do. So I will see you guys next time. I'll catch you on the flip side.